There are few sporting highlights as box office as a knockout in boxing, and these fight ending punches from 2023 will prove it. I've got a question for everyone here. What's my mother name? A tradition here on SMB Boxing is to always start the new year with a bang and count down our picks of the best knockouts from the squared circles past 12 months. Beginning the list in Mexico, where Lazaro Alvarez made it look as easy as 1-2-3 when he put away Edgar Espinosa in under a minute with two blinding jabs and a potent left hand. De bronce? Y bueno, ahí está entonces un hombre. Relampagueante lo desconectan. El chamuco se fue al mismísimo averno, señoras y señores. Monumental, sublime, extraordinario, mayúsculo, genial, impresionante, Lázaro Álvarez. After delivering most people's best knockout and comeback of 2022 with a final round finish of Michael Conlon, Lee Wood returned to his hometown of Nottingham to make the second defense of his WBA featherweight title against the always dangerous Mexican contender Mauricio Lara. Most of all, to defend yourselves at all times, all right? To sports. The beginning was far from ideal for Wood, as he was cut by an accidental head clash in the opening round and then wobbled by a short right cross from Lara in the closing stages of the second session. They wait for Lara to punch. saw the wobble there and shaken again just by a jab body shot right hand and now Lara starts to open up he senses this could be a significant attack as the blood is spread across the face of Lee Wood here Torrid times for the champion following his shaky start Wood impressively won the next four rounds on the spin by utilizing a solid jab to set up and land numerous eye-catching power punches on Laura's head and body he's just sitting in front of Lee Wood at the one point slow and then a fast one comes. Good and good hook, good count hook from both men. Both men looking very dangerous, but both men also looking very vulnerable. Good body shot from Lee Wood. Just doesn't look to have that, that sharpness and some of these punches are going in. And they must be hurting him because they're rattling into his boots. Great work from Lee Wood there. It's level when you can land them accurate right hands like that one there. I tell you what, Laura looks a bit unsteady on the left. Find that setback from the opening round and that cut by the left eye swings in a lovely left hook. Late in the seventh round, Wood was still clearly in the ascendancy, but during an exchange of left hooks, Laura cracked the defending champion flush on the chin and dumped him heavily on the canvas. Good work for Lee Wood, though. Well timed, but. Oh! Simultaneously landing left hooks and down Wood goes. The danger very much still there. Dying seconds of the seventh round. Can Lara finish it here now? A controversial towel toss at the time from Wood's trainer Ben Davison then signaled the changing of the guard and Lara to join a long list of Mexican featherweights to hold a world title. And the towel comes in from Ben Davison. So Mauricio Lara with the cherished WBA World Championship belt now across his shoulder, joining a long list of Mexican featherweights. Jordan White exploded onto the super featherweight scene with a one-round blowout of the previously undefeated Erickson Garcia. Protect the mandate total mental. Protect yourself at all times. Token loose, touch him up. White is nicknamed Short Dog, but on the night, a more fitting moniker would have been Short Work, as he took less than two minutes to destroy Garcia with a blistering counter left hand. That's why I think Short Dog should have popped more crap. And just like that, a sharp left hand, wow. and that drops Garcia on his back, and it is over. Short Dog, big time power in round one. After successfully returning from a three-and-a-half-year hiatus with a win in his previous outing, former world lightweight champion Tevin Farmer continued his comeback trail by taking on tough journeyman Oscar Barajas in the main event of the Philly Fight Night 3 card in Philadelphia. My commands at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to both from the start, Farmer adopted his usual slick southpaw style and put Barajas on the seat of his pants with a well-timed jab in round two. Snap in the right hand, pushing Barajas back. Oh, oh, oh goodness. I think it was a jab. Despite already hitting the deck and looking overmatched, 
Barajas nearly pulled off a huge upset when he took advantage of a lapse in concentration from Farmer by hurting him with an onslaught of punches in the final 45 seconds of the third stanza. Went downstairs for a moment, coming back up top, trying to show a little, ooh! So Barajas waking up in round number three. Oh, Farmer's in trouble! Are you kidding me? Kevin Farmer's in big trouble! Kevin but, Farmer is, is officially in deep. He, oh, he's he's hurt, Mark. Are you kidding me? This can be a monumental upset. Oh, wow. After almost being embarrassed in front of his home fans, Farmer swiftly regained control of the bout, and in the sixth round, he recorded his first KO in five years when he curled Barajas up on the canvas with a thunderous left hand. He's caught him again, up top, left hand, right hand. Oh! Oh, oh my goodness! What a left by Kevin Farmer! And that is it! You've got to be kidding me! Oh, welcome back to Philly, Kevin Farmer! Unbelievable! Wow! Ramla Ali put an already agreed world title shot and her unbeaten record on the line against the 12 and 2 Jalisa Alejandra Guzman. All right, shake hands, good luck, and God bless both of you. From the outset, the fight was a clear chess match with the faster Ali looking to get her punches off first and the more powerful Guzman looking to time her with hefty counter shots. Oh, big left hook from Ali, hurts Guzman. Oh, good right hand there again from Ali. Ali as she comes in, but she's, it's been just missing. Oh, that was a good right hand from Guzman. Certainly Ooh. the confidence still there. Yeah, interesting, that our question heading into this fight was, oh, nice shot there from Ali, a crisp right hand she's throwing right now. There it is again, There's good a, shot. Good shot there from Guzman. Good shot from Guzman. Maybe the best shot of the fight. Best sequence of the fight for Guzman, who sneaks in another left hook. Good action to end the round. After Ali edged the first three rounds, Guzman gained a strong foothold in the bout as she badly shook up Ali with an overhand right in the fourth round, and then caught her clean with the same punch to score a knockdown in the final few seconds of the fifth session. But now it's back to what got her here, her boxing ability. Oh! oh down goes Ali on a perfect right hand! And she is going to be hey, saved by good. the bell here, Corey. You good? Yeah, those legs don't look good. Following the knockdown, the fight became hotly contested, but Guzman's better timing and power in the exchanges proved to be the key factor in its stunning outcome. It hands up until the last round where she landed some big left hooks that shook. Oh, Ali! down goes Ali, and she is out! for Alejandra Guzman. Wow. On a small show in San Diego, rising junior lightweight prospect Jonathan Lopez made it crystal clear that he was ready for bigger tests with a resounding KO of Jose Santos Gonzalez. Jonathan Lopez! In Gonzalez's previous 34 outings to the ring, Former world title holder Zelani Tete was the only man to have stopped him. However, while Tete needed seven rounds to get the job done, Lopez required less than a minute to flatten the normally durable journeyman with a nasty left hook. In Sheffield, the British super lightweight champion Dalton Smith and Liverpool's Commonwealth belt holder Sam Maxwell collided in a domestic unification battle. The hometown fighter Smith was dominant from the first bell as he frequently landed impactful flurries and timed the tentative single shots of Maxwell with shrewd counters. Very well. He took the sting out of that Maxwell. Oh, lovely right up behind the legs. Stiff and slight. There's another right hand over the top. This is good work from Dawn Smith. The lovely body shot just a second from Dawn Smith. There's another. Can't blame him. Sam Twist is he's looking for it. That's a great left hook from Dawn Smith. That was lovely. He gave the eyes to the body. Shot upstairs with the left hook. Beautiful shot. Good right hand. 
no, that's the shot my have been looking for. Nisa Bolli Arby coming forward. Then shots go, but that's the best shot. and he's come to such a great right hand from Dalton Smith. There was a blink from Maxwell as he backed up onto the road. An accidental head clash opened up a bad cut over Smith's right eye in the fifth round, but the incident actually worked against Maxwell as it prompted the Sheffield man to intensify his work and come close to scoring a knockdown in the sixth frame. To keep that comfortable lead on points, understand how he feels, he's being counted. He's just a great shot from Dalton Smith. Right. Although Maxwell was fortunate that his left glove didn't quite touch the canvas for a knockdown, it would matter little to the fight's outcome. As Smith continued to up the ante and near the midway mark of round seven, he cut Maxwell's legs from beneath him with a bludgeoning right hand to the temple. Without question, the fastest KO on this list came when featherweight prospect Jorge Chavez tackled journeyman Brian Perez on the undercard of Golden Boys and DeZone's Diaz Hesta event. Four round battle between Jorge Chavez and Brian Perez. Inside 30 seconds of the contest, Chavez froze Perez with a gigantic overhand right and then followed up with a left hook that sent the journeyman down in a statue-like motion. Another left hook there from Chavez. There oh, it is. and he and dropped down he a goes. big, a big one-two from Chavez. Perez is down and it's over. What a statement from Jorge Chavez as he came in with the one-two piece. Uh, you know, we've said this. Yeah, you win, but it's how you win. Jorge Chavez looking impressive tonight. The vacant British super welterweight title was at stake when Samuel Antwi and Mason Cartwright squared off in Bolton. Most of all, protect yourself at all times. Go up, boys. Both fighters came fast out of the blocks, with Antwi effectively using his longer reach and loose style to land accurate whipping shots at range, and Cartwright having his best moments with combinations at close quarters. Closing seconds then of an exciting opening round. Left hand there from Antwi. Cartwright was rocked. Antwi piling on the pressure. And at the moment, Antwi can't miss with that right hook to the body. Looking for that right hand, Antwi, and again the right to the body and right to the head. He's finished the second round as well as he did the first. Antwi, good left hand there from Cartwright. And again, Antwi responding so well. Tough round. Oh, uppercut there from Cartwright, found a way through. But then Antwi firing back off the rope. Great action here. Right hand there from Cartwright. Another great clean shot from Antwi. Uppercut there from Cartwright and again, but Antwi with a great response. Landing clean shots and a huge left hook there, and Cartwright looks unsteady. But with it, he's kept Cartwright quiet, doesn't he, for the most part as well. Antwi with a huge right hand there to the head of Cartwright. Something. Antwi effective off the ropes here now. Oh, good replica there from, from Cartwright. He's looked a little shaky. Great left hook there from Antwi, but he soon bounces back Cartwright. He doesn't need to. This is good. Huge hooks from Antwi again. Despite the competitive nature of the fight, the general consensus was that Antwi had a significant lead on the scorecards after eight rounds. However, he had gradually began to slow down and Cartwright took advantage by maintaining his steady fighting pace and simply outworking Antwi in rounds 9 through 11. Cartwright is longer at this weight anyway, the bigger man. Good jabbing from Cartwright. He needs to go after this one. He needs to get that close off. Getting that foot there from Cartwright. Lovely that Great double jab there from Cartwright. Well, really having a bit of success in working off it. Yeah, left hook there from Cartwright, and Antwi is staggered. Where has Mason Cartwright found this from? Good 
work again there from Cartwright. There's the left hook that George was talking about right on cue. Lovely work there from Carroll. Might find the winning punch. Big right hand from Antwi, and then the left hook from Cartwright. Coming into the 12th and final round, the closeness of the fight prompted both men to try to finish it strongly. Could still be all to play for in this 12th and final round. However, with 45 seconds left on the clock, Antwi ultimately made the scorecards irrelevant when he stopped Cartwright in his tracks with a pulverizing right hand and then wrap things up with two more crushing blows. Good work there off the ropes. A huge right hand there from Antwi, and left hook, and Antwi stops him dramatically. Huge shot, huge shot to win the title, and Mason Cartwright is down. So Samuel Antwi is the British champion. What a night for him. What a night of boxing we've had as well. In Dubai, Liverpool's Jazza Dickens had a seemingly routine second defense of his IBO featherweight belt on his hands against the lowly ranked Argentine contender Hector Sosa. Protect yourself at all times, touch gloves. In the first real exchange of the fight, Dickens scored a slightly lucky knockdown when he landed a left hand on Sosa's forearm as he slipped down to the canvas. If a punch lands in the target area and it causes you to fall on the floor, it's a knockdown. That's the yep. rules, unfortunately, for Sosa tonight. From there, Dickens got into a nice rhythm and seized control of the bout as he repeatedly punished the wild swings of Sosa with pinpoint counters. Oh, nice. Nice up the foot. It's one thing why I'll say about Jazzy, he has a lot of tricks. Yeah. Oh, got shots there. Body as well. Yeah. So as a husband trying to walk that early. Yeah, nice. Very nice double cook. Very nice double cook for Jazz in there. Like, it, it, it's coming from the left where you're saying so he's coming in and you're trying to get caught with that double cook. Beautiful walk from Jazz Dix. I think a little bit. But Jazz is letting, letting him miss and make it yeah. okay. By the eighth round, the pace of the fight noticeably began to drop, and Sosa, who had been regularly slipping on the canvas due to a problem with his boots, began to plant his feet and land decent shots on Dickens more often. That's why it looked like it was underneath. Oh, yes. Same time, punching again. At the end of the ninth round, Dickens and his corner were heard agreeing that the best way to now fight Sosa was to try to push him onto the back foot rather than counter him. You can feel him tiring, can't you? Pushing him back, it's easier, Pete. He's pushing him back, yeah. it's easier, yeah. Don't let him come to you. Yeah. However, trying to implement the new tactic proved to be Dickens' undoing as a minute into the tenth frame, Sosa walked him onto a devastating right hand and claimed an unlikely come-from-behind victory. Good right hand, yeah, from Sosa. Oh, no, he's got... Hey. Oh, whoa! Oh, my God. Whoa, what Get a him. shot. <laughs> That's the beauty of boxing, he's, yes. he's changed his life completely now mm, for sure. and the people around him yep. by winning one fight with one punch basically. Late replacement opponents are sometimes banana skins in boxing, but that was nowhere near the case when Yamaguchi Falcao stepped in to challenge the heavy hitting WBA regular super middleweight champion David Morrell on 10 days notice. <laughs> In the chief support bout of Showtime's massive Davis Garcia event, Morell came out firing on all cylinders from the opening bell and landed a stiff right hand that sent Falcao flying back against the ropes for a scored knockdown. And he's oh, he in trouble. is crumbling, stumbling. He's still on his feet, but not for long. The ropes held him up. He goes down for the second time in his career. With Falcao hurt and clearly already there for the taking, 
Morel wasted little time in putting the overmatched Brazilian out of his misery as he toppled him face first to the canvas with a vicious right hook. How much more is this one going to last? Good night. It's over. David Morel with a scintillating KO in his Las Vegas debut. 25 years old. 9 0 with eight KOs. Sticking with late substitutes on just a week's notice, George Ashey moved up a division to face the WBO's number four welterweight contender, Alexis Rocha, who was pretty much a stone's throw away from fighting for the title. Listen to my commands. Touch him up. Touch him up, gentlemen. Thank you. After the first few exchanges in the fight, Rocha realized that Ashy didn't carry much power at the higher weight class and walked the late substitute down before introducing him to the canvas with a thumping right hook in the third round. Believes that a stoppage could be imminent because again, oh my goodness, what a right hook! And maybe that's why you're so stationary. You're setting up that right hook right there. Ashy got up and proved to be very game. But Rocha repeatedly got on the inside and dominated the fight with stinging flurries of punches to the head and body. There we go. See, Rocha's digging downstairs now. Round five now underway, and they're right back to where they left off. Right hook connects there from Rocha. I would love to have seen Rocha double up on that right hook. So Rocha making adjustment and punch with Ashy. You know, to always give you everything they have, but right now he's out class there. Alexis Rocha, Rocha he, it's only a matter of time before he catches Ashy over the top again. With Ashy visibly wilting under the punishment, Rocha reintroduced him to the canvas with another crunching right hook and ended the proceedings in the final minute of round seven. Non-stop onslaught from Rocha. Oh my goodness! What a shot! Alexis Rocha! It was only a matter of time, guys. This is what I saw from the beginning. Whenever you keep your chin up in the air like that, you're bound to get chin check. The last time Alexis Rocha had an opportunity like this, he showed up. In the first of three visits to Australia, the face of boxing down under Tim Zhu needed to get past world-ranked Mexican contender Carlos Ocampo to retain his WBO interim super welterweight title and his mandatory position for an undisputed showdown against American Jermel Charlo. We begin round number one, the undefeated Tim Zhu against Carlos Ocampo. Zhu started uncharacteristically fast as he rattled Ocampo with several punches before sending him down on all fours with a sharp straight right hand near the one minute mark of the opening round. My goodness, what a start oh. by Zhu, down goes Ocampo with the laser right hand. Ocampo made it back to his feet, but was given virtually no time to regroup as Zhu swarmed all over him and then emphatically brought the curtain down on the Mexican's night with a savage head swiveling left hook. Spence in the opening round. It was old school versus new school when Cuban junior middleweights Ioannis Teus and Livia Navarro fought for bragging rights on the Paul August undercard in Florida. Good luck. All right, so Cuba versus Cuba violence in Florida. After a competitive start to the bout, Teus made significant headway in the third round when he sent his nine-year older countryman Navarro down to his knees with a succession of thudding right hands. Are they Canadian? After the knockdown, Teus took command of the action and visibly began to weaken Navarro with clean power shots to the head and body. He's round out. He's trying to land punches of his oh. own. He got clipped for a second time, and he needs the bell to ring, and it does. Several times, Navarro looked close to being stopped, but he had no quit in him and would fire just enough punches back to keep Teus honest. Teus got a lot of power. I thought you were about to say something about the actual fight, so I was hanging on every word there, and then you dropped and learned English. <laughs> but it's just it's non-stop pressure, so uh, I think it's hurt. It's a bit hurt there as well. 
Oh, you can see Navarro playing defense there. He's trying to shake those cobwebs out. And that looked to stun him, as did that jab. Caught him on the chin again. Navarro fighting off the ropes. He's trying to get him too. Say his last as if to say, come on now. Those didn't land. He continues to find a home. Navarro should put his hands up. Okay, in Ireland, anywhere. Oh, nice right hand there for Tejas. That's all of that, but um, I think my team did have a, a set. Oh. Coming into the 10th and final round, Tejas was way ahead on the scorecards. But rather than resting on his laurels, he continued to throw power shots, and with 80 seconds of the fight remaining, the gamble paid off, as the younger Cuban used a break from a clinch to pave the way for a home run left hand on Navarro's jaw. Belt line from Uanis. from hell for Ioannis Tejas. Wow, what a shot. I don't know where that was. Taking the countdown back to Mexico, where Eduardo Sugar Nunez extended his impressive 100% KO rate to a 24th win with a not-so-sweet dispatching of the previously unbeaten Martin Seca. Round one underway. This one's scheduled for 10 rounds. As expected from the opening bell, Nunez looked very heavy-handed and then showed the full extent of his power in the final minute of the second round by laying out Seika with a monstrous right hook. You can really hear the punch. Oh! of the punch, but when he landed, he landed on his head. So you can just hear the canvas, his head jumped off the canvas. And that's a double impact that just landed. It was wild while it lasted when the inexperienced and unbeaten Australian heavyweights, Brandon Grotch and Liam Taliba'a met down under. There was virtually no feeling out process at all as Grotch and Taliba'a tagged each other with alarming ease before exchanging heavy knockdowns in rapid succession at the end of the first round. A much bigger man on that occasion. Now he's taking big shots though. Big shots, Taliba'a. And now we get to see what the bull Brandon Grotch is made of because he's a banger, is Taliba'a, and he will go for the kill. Following the chaotic opening frame, there was barely time for the audience to catch their breath as just moments into the second session, Grotch, who is nicknamed the Bull, unleashed a huge left hook that would have knocked out a bull. And it's Grotch who stole. Oh! In one of the most anticipated fights of the year, American knockout artists Gervonta Davis and Ryan Garcia put their O's up for grabs and met at a catch weight of 136 pounds in Las Vegas. Protect yourselves at all times, listen to my commands, touch them up, back to your corner gentlemen. After a quiet feeling out opener, the fight caught fire in round two when Garcia landed a decent spurt of punches against the ropes and then relentlessly pressured Davis in an attempt to connect with something stronger. Along the ropes. Now one thing Garcia's good at is cutting off the ring. A more aggressive second round for Garcia. They, they say that Garcia had to take advantage of Davis's slow starts with that left hook. But got cut. Oh! To his credit, Garcia recovered quickly from being put down on the canvas for only the second time in his career, and Davis was only able to clip him with another single left hand before round two came to a close. Oh, 
trauma in Sin City after a slow start in round one. From round three, the fight returned to a measured pace, which suited Davis better as he used his superior ring IQ to frustrate Garcia and deliver the more effective punches. Good job of fainting by Davis and able to pull counter like Floyd Mayweather Jr. However, as both men possessed quick and powerful hands, there was a sense that one punch could end the contest at any moment. Davis comes in, There's whether to land or we don't know. jab from Davis. But a contract weight of 136 pounds, lead left hand to the breadbasket, scores for Davis. Mark left, and there it is. High ring IQ has been in the gym since he was a child. And of course, if you're Ryan Garcia, you still believe that your power can make a difference in this fight. There's that left hook that landed, and that one just missed, but Garcia shows up as Davis lands the left, goes to the body, under a minute left in the fifth. Remember, he falls, oh, there's a right hand that caught oh, Davis, yeah. another right hand, and Garcia with his best moments of the fight. Yeah, and you know, those right hands Garcia landed were good ones. 45 seconds left. Straight left hand lands for Davis. After building up a firm lead at the midway point of the bout, Davis caught Garcia with a liver quivering left hook, which sent the Californian down in a delayed reaction and closed the show in the seventh round. He's been able to get in. Another left hook and a right hand by Garcia. And now, oh, Garcia forced to take a knee. Just as he predicted, Gervonta Tank Davis improves to 29 0. Ryan Garcia tasting defeat for the first time in paralyzing fashion. After seeing an eagerly anticipated rematch against Dillian White fall apart two weeks out due to White failing a drug test, former two time heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua needed to deal with stand-in opponent Robert Hellenius in a convincing manner on home soil to keep the door open for potential super fights with Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. God bless, touch gloves. Do it. To the dismay of some fans in the crowd, Joshua started cautiously, but still landed enough jabs and follow-up power shots to comfortably win all of the first six rounds and visibly soften up Hellenius. Trying to set traps. And that attack from Joshua followed some boos and whistles in the crowd here. Double it. Go to the body. Good right hand. That's a shot. Arrhenius felt that 100%. Mm -hmm. so that's a great right hand. The stations between them are quite healthy. What do you think about him now? But Tony, you know. Oh, good right hand. Hook to the body, right hand. He needs to get a reaction out of Robert Arrhenius. That was a good left hook. With Hellenius tottering around the ring, Joshua turned the screw early in the seventh round and showed that his much-debated killer instinct was still intact when he abruptly finished matters with a bazooka of a right hand. Just as he said, he was struggling to find the range. I told you. He lands the conclusive right hand, and in an instant, it's all over. I said he was capable of this. After suffering back-to-back -back stoppage defeats, 12-2 Mark Sleeves was looking to return to winning ways by stepping back in competition to face capable gatekeeper Shamal Ramanuj. Ramanuj um, from the red corner in the southpaw stance against uh, Mark Sleeves from the orthodox stance. The first four rounds were quite tentative with Sleeves looking like the better fighter technically and mixing up his attacks well, while Ramanuj, as advertised, appeared like a tough nut to crack and largely relied on a left hand to the body to do damage. I think he's hurting with a body shot. Well, he's hurting yeah, with a body I shot. think you're right too. He's hurting with a body shot. Oh, Ooh, and again, and another and body again. shot there from Ramanuj. Whack the body, wouldn't it? Ooh, that's, good right. that, that's very good by there. Good. Back with that left, but... Right hand. Which is the there it goes, and again, yeah. good, nice good combinations right there again. Oh, yeah. good, good countering left hand there from Manoj. He needs to get behind it and use that punch. Oh, very good hook right there by Sleeves. Amazing. Yep. I mean, we 
the inside. Maybe he's a little, maybe, sorry, maybe he's a little cautious. Oh, there's that body shot again. You can see the transition. There you go. Got him in the corner, working the body, but Anuj gets out. In the fifth round, Schleves really stepped on the gas and hurt Ramanuj for the first time in the fight with an attack that finished with a big left hook. Yeah. Oh, he's hurting left, left hook there. He Very did. He Very wobbled. good left hook. He wobbled. His legs are still wobbly. Yeah, had him Schleves, on the ropes and he gets him on, him. on the ropes again. That's, get on him. you got to get on him now. After finally figuring out a way to trouble Ramanuj, Schleves kept up the pressure and slumped the Fijian against the ropes with a Hail Mary left hook in the final 45 seconds of the fifth frame. Oh, oh. Yeah, he got it. Wow, he's asleep. Oh, you know what, Bill? He's asleep. Bill, you were he right. He's celebrating he's already. That's over. That is a vicious oh. shot that has ended this fight, and Mark Schleves is back. Wow, what a statement. What a knockout. Wow. Off the back of scoring one of the upsets of 2022 against Jason Rosario, Brian Mendoza quite literally faced a tall order in the form of the unbeaten six foot five towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora. He's good here. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. God bless. In the opening six rounds, the 11 to one underdog Mendoza struggled to put a dent in the unusually built Fundora and was notably on the receiving end of numerous jarring uppercuts. Hold Fundora, but still try and work a little bit. And there's an uppercut. Oh, there's a great uppercut from Mendoza then. Just missed, yeah. A fence right there by, by grabbing on him. And there is a left uppercut by Fundora. Ooh, body shot by Fundora. Left uppercut to the body by Fundora. His moments, but you know, it's those opportunities that he gets right there. Yeah. He decides to hold on. Come to 154. And 15 of his 21 wins inside the distance for Fundora. 13 of his 20 victories have come via form of knockout. And there's a left hand that lands upstairs for Fundora. Uppercuts now on the inside by Fundora. And inside in Fundora at the range he wants to be. And again, Mendoza was trying to do, well, there it is. He was trying to do what he did to stop his attack as he's getting really close for it to make them smother his punches. Series of left hands by Pandora. Uppercut, jolting the ground. Oh. Mendoza oh, throwing Mendoza. Oh, this right hand. Mendoza pays for it. Oh, double left uppercut on the inside. Right uppercut. Bleeding and clearly behind on the scorecards, Mendoza improbably caught lightning in a bottle early in the seventh round when he sent the towering inferno up in smoke with a series of meaty punches. Now he's trying to oh, The lineal cruiserweight champion Jai Apataya reluctantly gave up his IBF title to fight Ellis Zorro in one of the biggest cards in boxing history, the Day of Reckoning in Saudi Arabia. Although both fighters were unbeaten coming into the bout, Apataya's number one ranking made him the overwhelming favorite to win, and it didn't take long for the Australian to live up to the billing as near the end of the first round, he smashed Zorro into the bottom rope with a picturesque left cross. He's not getting bullied too far. Back oh, oh, big shot! Two single shot, left hand. Zorro is out, Zorro is out. His head hit the canvas, that's bad news. He gave an indication of what was to come earlier in the round. And in one decisive moment, it's all over for Ellis Zorro. In Monaco, South Africa's only reigning world champion, Sivanati Nanshinga, looked to put on a show in the second defense of his IBF light flyweight title against the battle-hardened Mexican, Adrian Curio. Protect yourself all the times. Touch gloves. Good luck, guys. From the get-go, Curio forced the pace of the fight and landed some decent body shots at close quarters. However, Nachinga appeared very composed under the Mexican's pressure and had his fair share of success with several slick counters. Come inside the distance, although noticeably the last three have all gone 12 ways. Nine stoppages. Can't do. Very, very good. No 50 cents. Curio is 
Rough, he's rugged, he's in your face. The accuracy will get counted, so he has to be switched off. Good attack, good turn. Curiel's aggressive start to the bout was no surprise to anyone familiar with his career, but with just four KOs in his 27 previous outings, virtually no one expected the Mexican to have enough firepower to stop the unbeaten on Shinga. A minute and what can be only described as a punch of a lifetime later, Nachingov was flat out under the bottom rope and Curio was the new champion. Opening up the zone's Edwards Rodriguez broadcast, the unbeaten and highly regarded Olympian Peter McGrail faced his first acid test against the still ambitious 16 and 1 Detroit native Jarico O'Quinn. So here we go. Rico O'Quinn in the red, Peter McGrail in the blue. The first four rounds could hardly have gone any better for McGrail as he bamboozled O'Quinn with nimble in and out raids and dropped him twice. At the end of the fourth round, O'Quinn's trainer Chad Jaquillard did not complicate matters and simply told him to go and turn it up on McGrail. Right, we don't have to try. We just got to go. You hear me? Uh -huh. We got to go. All right? Let's go, baby. Come on. It's time to turn it up now. It's go okay, time. It's fair to say that O'Quinn followed Jaquillard's instructions to a T, as in the final minute of the fifth round, the Detroit native collapsed McGrail sideways through the ropes with a perfectly timed counter right hand and sealed one of the comebacks of the year. After spending a decade fighting in the featherweight division, former world champion Mark Moxayo was looking to make a statement in his debut outing at the super featherweight limit against Mexican southpaw Isaac Avalar. Should be a good one here. Mark Moxayo, he wants to be a two division champion. Both fighters settled into the fight well and were not afraid to let their hands fly. However, in the first two rounds, the cleaner and more forceful shots did come from Oxayo. Right, you want to be active. We know that um, Oxayo has uh, world-class skill. Canelito. So, uh, Canelito is no pushover. So, but Oxayo just connected with that left hook. Marvin does speak English, so he understood. Put the uppercut from Oxayo inside. In Idaho. It should be an eye. Avalar, you see his toughness here. He's, yes. he's strong. Oh, uppercut from Moxayo. In the opening 20 seconds of the third round, Moxayo fired off a speedy barrage of punches that sent Avalar backwards and made him drop down to the canvas. Third round. Wow. The attacks and the knockdown happens early in the third. That was a tremendous combination. There must have been five punches there. After Avalar beat the count, Moxayo moved in for the kill, and within a minute, he skillfully pivoted to the right before vaporizing the Mexican with a colossal left hook. Mark Moxayo. Oh! A 
huge KO! Maxeo has knocked out Camelito on a huge uppercut, immediately called off. Wow! Mark Maxeo. Rich, you were saying it. How will he look at a new weight division? Well, the power is there. Before we show you our pick for the Knockout of the Year 2023, here are some honorable mentions. Again, Gurkic, he started the round pretty quick. Oh, lots of shots from Ellis Jr. Like your, your cup of a different breed, and he dropped them. Oh, man. It's over. And it is over. It's a over. KO, Sebastian Hernandez. It's safe to say that hardly anyone thought that Chris Colbert did enough to beat Jose Valenzuela on points in a 10-round lightweight clash back in April of 2023, not least Valenzuela himself. You are so a loser. You lost. You, got you lost. You are so a loser. I beat him, bro. I beat him. Who you think won? I did what I could, man. I felt like I won. I landed the hardest shots. I landed the body shots. I landed all the shots. I, I dropped them. I dominated. But, you know, it is what it is. I guess this boxing. I feel like I put it on him, bro. I put it on him. And then not once felt threatened in there. I was having fun. I let him, you know, how to do his thing. But, man, I was in full control the whole time. To answer your question, it's a terrible decision. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I respect you. All right. I think it was a terrible decision. <laughs> yeah. Bad decisions cost another young fighter and it makes me sick to my stomach. Seven months later, the stakes were a lot higher when Colbert and Valenzuela met again in a much-needed rematch that also served as a final eliminator for the WBA lightweight title. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves now. Good luck to you both. Strikingly similar to their controversial first bout, Valenzuela started like a house on fire as he scored a knockdown and had Colbert in serious trouble for the majority of the first round. While there was definitely a sense of deja vu in the opening three minutes, the ensuing rounds showed little resemblance to the first meeting as Valenzuela bossed the action by using improved footwork to set up fierce two-fisted salvos, which often forced Colbert to retreat against the ropes. With this hook. And he's inviting him to, to go and then to hit him. We would like to see him do it now, starting to unload and open up more. This is what he said he would do. Along the wall. There's that overhand left. There's a jab. Nice jab. And the left. And now again, sitting down on the side. To, to yeah. Colbert. All right. He's trying to get in those hands. Nice. Ooh. Wow. He really is the footwork on display. Beautiful stuff from Valenzuela. The last fight felt he faded down the stretch. And here, putting Colbert on the ropes again. With just under half of the sixth round remaining, Valenzuela's glaringly obvious desire to finish the fight inside the distance came to fruition when he hit Colbert's snooze button with a leaping right hook and brutally settled the score. Colbert should be 0-2 at 130. Oh, oh, Celebrates his 13th victory and ninth via devastating.